So today in cooking with Susan, okay, that's really a very bad joke because Susan doesn't do much cooking. Um, today I am going to do some boiled book pages. I hope. I've never done this before. I've watched lots of videos. So of course you watch enough videos and you start to think, I can do anything. So I'm going to give it a shot. I'm going to film this in little short bursts and then stitch it all together later. So what I've got are a variety of pots. I was real thrilled to find that uh, turkey roaster at the thrift store the other day so that I can lay some papers flat. I went out to the yard and harvested a bunch of leaves and I'm going to put the pages together and then I will come back and show you that. So basically what I've been doing is piling up layers of leaves and flowers on just good old plain copy paper in this particular pot. And I don't know, there's probably about 20 sheets of paper in there. I'm going to bind it up with some cardboard on the outsides and then I'm going to throw in some rusty bits and fill it with water and take it out and put it on the barbecue grill. Okay, there's the bundle all tied up uh, with all my leaves in between. I think tying it up was probably the hardest part so far. Uh, I wanted to make sure I got the papers tight enough so that the leaves didn't fly out while they were uh, boiling, which I understand is a problem some people have had in the past. So I will make sure I weighed it down really well and cross my fingers. Okay, I'm going to take it outside and put it on the barbecue to boil for a couple hours now. I had some fabric here that didn't really take my tea stain. It might not take this either, but I went ahead and wrapped that around the pages to hopefully keep the leaves in. And then I wrapped a few pieces of fabric around some twigs, and I had that uh, tin dragonfly, so at least maybe we can get a dragonfly imprint. We will just see what happens. Okay, so I've got two packets of papers boiling on the barbecue grill. Uh, the one on the left, the papers were able to lay out completely flat, and I really like doing that a lot better. The one on the right had to fold them in half, and it was really difficult to wrap. Actually, both of them are really hard to wrap. I'm going to have to figure out a better way of doing that. So my plan is to let these do like a slow boil for two hours, turn them off, and just let them sit until tomorrow morning. That's going to be really hard because, of course, we want to see if anything worked, but I think if I let them sit overnight, it'll be a little bit better. Uh, in the water is... Uh, cup of vinegar in each pot, white vinegar, it's just what we had, and then some rusty water that I had left over from rusting some other metal pieces. I poured a little bit of that in each one, and each one has some rusted metal junk that has been piling up around here. That's it until uh, the unveiling. Okay, it's been 24 hours since I put the papers on the boil. I took them off after about two hours. I turned the, the uh, flame off and then I let them sit until the water cooled down. I took them out of the water and took the strings off and then just let them sit overnight until I could separate them today. I did wrap some fabric loosely around some of the bundles just to get some color and put a few leaves in. Just got some interesting textures. I can always do another dye on these a little bit more deliberately. It's a hard angle to focus in here so what I'm going to concentrate on is the first views of the papers as I take them out and then later on after everything's dry I will film again. So this top piece is just the cardboard top of the bundle and everything's going to have to be rinsed and then dried. And I'm going to save these leaves and see if I can maybe do something with the leaves. Pretty cool. This paper is going to be super delicate so I expect I will get some tears along the way and I just need to roll with it and know that I can still use the paper for something else. This first batch are the ones that I put in the enamelware pot so that everything could lay flat and I already know that that's going to be my preference for a lot of stuff. The folding I found very difficult to do. Wow. Okay, that is cool. I think that might be two sheets together. Well, maybe just one. Let's see. I will speed this up when I'm in edit mode. I can already tell that. Oh, wow. This is cool. I can understand how this becomes addicting. Those were, let's see, some birch leaves and some ferns. A little bit of yellow in here. A 
I'm not sure what it came from. It's a very busy organic. Oh, it looks like maybe that was, I think that was the birch leaf. Well, that's cool. There are a whole bunch of birch trees across the street that I know I can get more leaves from. Let's see. These were some of my grasses. I didn't. They didn't do so well when I used the spray inks, so maybe they will do a little better this time. Whoops, I just ripped my own paper, not paying attention. That's kind of interesting. This was penstemon that was bright purple. Wow, the flowers, all the color has been leached out of the flowers, but there's absolutely no color purple on the page. It's just everything's kind of a gray, little hints of gold in a few places, but not many. But I think that once all this is rinsed, you're really going to see the imprints of some of these. Ah, maybe the gold came from my poppy. Oh no, that's not a poppy, that's an nasturtium. Oh, that's got some cool leafing. Nope, no color on the page there. Nope, I guess it wasn't from the nasturtium. Unless it just leached out and then went to the other pages, which is very possible. I might end up turning this off and just coming back after things have been pulled because I think this is sort of like watching paint dry. This is leaves from either my Ribes or my Coast Nine Bark. I'm not sure which. I'll have to go back out and look at my plant. Okay, I'm going to hit pause. This is going to take forever and nobody wants to watch all of this, but I promise to show you as I flip through later. Okay, I had to come back and show some more unveilings just because it's so much fun. This is my red bud tree, and it did a really nice impression. This is, I'm on my second batch now, the ones that had folded papers, and this is watercolor paper, so it is interesting to see the way the leaves, I don't know that it makes necessarily a better impression, but maybe it doesn't turn, I don't know, it didn't turn as black as some of the other ones. That was... A tree that's hanging over the fence line so I'm not sure but that is really cool I think that might be a plum tree those other leaves this look like from that same tree really cool and this is from my native mallow and yarrow and this was just a little bit of the um, mallow flowers, so they leached all the color out, and the flowers are purple, or pink, bright pink, so that's nice. I think I like the yarrow. The yarrow seems to do well no matter what I do with it. This is from the Japanese maple. Yeah, it looks like I didn't put anything on the inside. Oops. And I'm not sure what tree that is. Some interesting designs, not a whole lot of veining in there. Let's see. Looks like I forgot to put stuff in the middle of some of these. Oh well, I can always dye them a second time, which is also kind of fun to see what we would get the next time through. This is also a watercolor paper, but a little bit lighter and single sheets. So I was envisioning a different kind of book. This is Cosmos, which has a bright purple flower and wow, there is like no color left in that flower, but there's no purple on the page. Although I did get, look at that. That is a nice, nice impression, a little bit of yellow. Interesting, yellow from the center of the flower. I think there's still a little bit of the cosmos in bloom. Oh, nice. I know that my favorite way of doing this is going to be where the papers can lay flat. I don't like trying to fold them and get them in there right. So that's something for me to remember going forward really can see the flower. I don't know if much of this washes away when you rinse the papers or not. I guess we'll find out. But not all the papers have to be pretty enough to stand on their own. 
they've got something like this in the background I can, you can add a pocket or a tuck or something to the page little bits of yellow I don't know where the yellow is coming from I did not put any turmeric in this although I might do that in the next batch this is my dogwood tree oh maybe some of the yellows coming from the dogwood there's yellow in there did I have nope. and that looks like some more dogwood huh okay so I will say some some yellow and purple from the dogwood the manzanita um, leaves. I only did one branch of those in the other batch, and those came out kind of orange, which was nice. So it'll just take time to learn which plants are going to give me what color. Ah, the fern. And the fern gives off some yellow. Well, that's kind of interesting. Would not have expected that, although I didn't get a really good impression. It's still neat to get that little bit of the natural color. Hmm. Yeah, and some of them just don't do, and that's okay, too. I mean, if nothing else, you've got papers with um, interesting natural colors on them, and you can tear them up, you can re-dye them, you can stamp on them. Oh, interesting. So this was, it's called Naked Ladies, and it's a bulb that runs, grows around here. It's not native, but it's all over the place. And it is a really, really bright pink, and it's kind of a purpley tinge to it, but there's not really pink here well there is over here so maybe that's going to release there's a lot of that still in bloom i might try that some more all right i'm gonna turn you off for a while eco dyeing paper drying out here in the sun and considering how hot it is should be dry super fast okay i'm back with my papers that have been boiled with leaves and flowers in between the pages they were boiled for about two hours with a cup of vinegar and some rusty bits and water and that was about it. And there's no papers that make me go, oh my gosh, this is fabulous. But what there is is a lot of potential in using this for designing uh, eco journals, uh, nature journals, collages that are nature-based, and just having fun seeing what kind of colors you can get out of the different plants. So I had two pots going. One of them, the papers were able to lay completely flat. The other one, I had to fold them. I am definitely going to do the keeping it flat. I just like that better. I felt like I had a little bit more control over the layout of where the plants were going to go, which is something you kind of want to think about maybe. Um, so I'm going to show you some of the ones that are not so great. You know, just nothing happened. This was a fern, but you really can't see. I mean, it's kind of interesting. This was a uh, dogwood, I believe, but the I have no idea where the color came from. If it came from the dogwood or from something else, I guess it came from the dogwood. But it just looks kind of like a blotch. Even though you can see some veining, it's not real exciting to look at. This was some of my native fuchsia, which is a bright red flower. What interests me about this is seeing that it does let out some of the color. So maybe if I placed it in different places on the edges and didn't look for an exact print, but just to get some of the color bleeding. I also felt like what I was doing on the watercolor paper, for some reason, it didn't print as well as when I was using just the straight copy paper. So who knows? Um, I don't know why. I got lots of blacks and grays, not a whole lot of other color. I might try some alum next time. I might add some turmeric to get a little bit of yellow. This was my Japanese maple here. And this, I think, is the birch tree across the street. This is some yarrow. I like that the yarrow prints really well, really well. This is some more of the birch. So now I'm getting a little bit of yellow. A little bit of yellow here too. The birch trees are really birch leaves are really nice. I'm definitely going to get some more of those. Now this, can you see the flower outline? This is Cosmos, and I just snipped the flower so that I could put it face down. And then there's a little bit of blue here, I think, from my native asters. And this just looks really muddy. There's lots of veining and stuff here. I think this is the penstemon, but not real pretty to look at color-wise. Lots of mud, little bits of yellow. See, mud, but maybe a little bit of an impression here. 
like the yellow here. Again, I'm not real sure what that came from. Next batch, I'm going to do better at listing what I'm using. These are the leaves from my redbud tree, and I really, really like the way these came out. This is, I think, manzanita. Some more from the redbud. Some more yarrow. So if I was doing a deep dark into the forest journal, these pages would be great because they really look like you've been through a lot of storms. This is the ferns. The ferns seem to release some of the yellow. The rest is from a rusty bit that I had in between the pages. And that one's pretty. That, I think, is the plum tree hanging over the fence. This is a fern, believe it or not. Kind of hard to tell, but it is a fern. So lots of blah. These are manzanita leaves, and what excites me about this is just to see that they do release some cover color, so I can use some more manzanita leaves and maybe kind of decide where I want to put them along the edges so I can get some of the color, even though it doesn't do much in the way of veining. Maybe if the papers are tighter next time. This is Coast Nine Bark, which has the potential to be really good. It's got some nice veining. It's another fern. And I'm not sure what these little, this might be my native asters there. Just really blotchy. They kind of look like really poorly done ink blotches. Some more manzanita leaves. And I think this is from a non-native sage, which has the potential to do some neat things with um, composition. If you think about where you're laying them out, you get a little tiny bit of veining. Lots more blotches. Blotches. This was hummingbird sage, which really didn't give me much. And Japanese maple leaves. This was from my Ribes plant, a current. Yeah, explosion, right? I mean, I can see the veining. I don't know if you can see it, but I keep telling myself if I use just part of it, maybe it won't be quite so overwhelmingly uh, blah. I don't know. This is my native buckwheat. It's actually called a uh, rosy buckwheat, so it's got bright red pom-pom kind of flowers when it first blooms and then they fade to pink. I didn't know it would do anything, but it did, so I might try that one again. Even though I didn't really get much of the color, I did get some design. Some more buckwheat. That's probably the best of any of the ferns. So it's nice to know that the ferns are going to give me some kinds of yellow. These are my favorites, I saved for the last. This is the Cosmos, which just amazes me because the flower is bright, bright, bright pink and then the center of the flower is yellow. When I took the flowers off, they were completely leached of any color, but we did still get the outline and we get the little pop of yellow. And then these are my native, uh, no, this was Coyote Mint that did this. And another blob. And this was some nice, I think that was the birch leaves again and the red bud. This is another Cosmos. This is wonderful. The rest of the page is blucky, but that, that's really nice. This is watercolor paper, and it just didn't absorb the color nearly as much as the uh, printer paper. The red bud, and that was a piece of rusty screen that was on there. And then this is some yarrow, which just does some really interesting things. And the yarrow. And another Cosmos, which almost looks like a Shasta Daisy here. So what I have learned is that I really prefer doing them in a tray where I can lay the papers flat and layer the leaves up from them. Um, have a plan for what you're going to do when you're taking the papers out that are wet so you have a place to dry them. When I finished boiling the books, I, which they boiled for about two hours, I turned the grill off, waited till the water cooled down, then I took the packets out of the water and just let them sit for 24 hours. Then I rinsed the pages underwater and what I did was I just filled one of my tubs and did it just like you were doing tea dyeing and just dipped the pages in and out to rinse them off and then I had to pile them all on top of each other again to take them outside to dry because I didn't have a plan for drying and that's where I got most of my rips was in, in that last stage so if I had had my cookie sheets ready where I could just take the wet papers and put them right on the cookie sheets and then take them out to dry 
I might not have ripped quite as many pages, but even ripped pages can be fun. So for a first try, I'm really pleased, um, even though I didn't get anything that makes me go, woo, look how gorgeous that is. I got a lot of interesting textures. I'm learning some of my plants in my garden that are going to release some certain colors, and I will certainly do this again. I hope you will try too, and let me know if you do so I can come watch your video. Thanks so much for stopping by. I'll see you next time.